Good afternoon, everyone. Just want to make a couple quick announcements before we get started. I want to make sure everyone has their cell phones turned off or is in uh, vibrate mode so we're not interrupted today. There will be no services at the cemetery today. I believe everyone is going down to the Cohocton Legion immediately following the service here at the funeral home. And there will be a time, I believe, for Chris to allow for um, folks to share. You'll be able to sit right in your seat if you want to, or you can come up come up front and do that as well. So I'd like to introduce Chris Wenzel. She will be uh, officiating the service today. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, as Todd said, I'm Chris Wenzel, and um, I'm a lifelong Wayland person. And it's very I'm very privileged to be here today to celebrate with all of you Karen's life. And as we gather here to pray together and give thanks for her, we also share the pain and loss of losing her, but also the hope that we'll be here with her again in eternal life. So let us pray for comfort for one another in these words. Lord, in our grief, we turn to you, for you are the God of love who hears us all. You listen to our prayers for Karen, whom you have called out of this world. Lead her to your kingdom of light and peace, and count her among the saints in glory. Amen. It's a perfect song. Back when music was good. <laughs> um, you never know. Um, sometimes you hear songs like that and you would never think of it for a situation like this, but how fitting it is to have that song. 
One thing I like to share with people at times like this is how important our memories are of people. Um, our memories are the things that we share with each other that keep someone alive. I believe that in our lives, you know, you always hear about the circle of life and that it's a circle and it's round. It has a beginning and an end. And I come to believe and I've come to hope that it's not a circle. It's a circle part way. It's an arc, but then it shoots off because life does not end. It doesn't end. It changes. It's changed. And Karen is still with us here every day. She's just changed. And the memories and the stories that we tell are the things that keep her alive in our hearts so that she stays here with us. And we have her here with us every day. And although it's changed, she's changed, she's still here. And one day we'll all be changed. And we will all be together holy again. Not just holy with an H, but holy with a W-H. Whole. We will be whole together again. And that hopefully brings us some comfort that this is not an end. It's not an end. It's a new beginning in a way of being for all of us. And one reason why I like to share, talk about sharing stories is how many are grandchildren here? Where are the grandchildren? Okay. You're all still fairly young. You're sort of getting up there, but you're still fairly young. And there's going to be a lot of things about your grandmother that you might not have known because they weren't something to be shared with you. Their situation never happened in your life, so she couldn't share that story with you. So it's important that your parents and, and anyone who knew her share those stories about her because it will help them to know her more. And in knowing her more, they will be able to live her, their lives under her guidance and her love. And they'll be able to live her, their lives knowing that she's still here with them. So I encourage you to share those stories with them. And I encourage anyone with has stories about Karen Probably most of them are good. Some of them might be a little shaky. But you still want to share those stories. And they'll make you laugh, and they'll help you to find joy. I don't know if I'll ever think of bowling again without thinking of Karen. I was telling young Tom that um, when I was telling my husband I'm do about doing this, he goes, boy, Karen and Tom are great bowlers. And it's just like, I, well, it's something that sticks with you after a while. And you'll never not think of bowling without thinking of her. And those are the kinds, kinds of things that bring her back to life for people. So I want to ask right now if, um, would you like to share right now? Either, either you can go. I okay, and I have it right up here. Oh, I don't know if I need that. I'm pretty loud. Hello? It's on. It's on. It's on. Okay, thank you all for coming today. Um, this is a little poem I found online that kind of reminded me. I thought the situation would be good. It's called She is Gone. You can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see her, or you can be full of the love that you shared with her. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday. Or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she is gone. Or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back. Or you can do what mom would have wanted. Smile, open your eyes, love and go on. Thank you. Thanks for coming, everybody. Um, oh, boy, I don't know where to begin. My mother was something else. We didn't always have the best relationship. And uh, when uh, I found out she was sick, she's very private about it. Um, 
luckily for me, she's old school, didn't know how to work a computer or a cell phone. Uh, I actually had to hack her patient portal to, to find out what was going on. And when I talked to her about it, she did confide in me that she was having some issues. Um, you know, she was just the life of the party, always, always trying to help the underdog, you know, the, the little guy, she hated bullies. And uh, she would go out of her way to, to help anybody that, that needed her. It could be a complete stranger, anybody that came into the bar that needed help. You know, um, one of my friends uh, lost their son recently. She didn't even know them, and she offered to make food for the family because she just had a big heart. And ironically enough, it's the same thing that, that, that took her away. But uh, my whole life I have worked very hard to try to get the same connection with her that my my brother and my sister and David had with her and it wasn't until last night that I realized why our relationship was so different that's because I am her and I, I intend to carry on the important things that we shared and working on getting a, a TV in the in the woman's bathroom down at Scoville's. <laughs> because that's something she's worked on for, you know, five, seven years. Is and there a woman in men's room? That's why oh, she said it's not <laughs> fair, you know, and she was all about, you know, equality for women. Yeah. She actually, she, that woman was fearless, you know. She, uh, she was afraid of nothing. And uh, I respect that. Reflecting on... Uh, how I raised my children and my mother also, you know, we've, we've lived with there since my daughter was three and my son was one, so she was like a second mother to my kids. And uh, I was reflecting on my relationship with Ariana and, you know, she would give me a hard time about how, how much harder I was on her than DeAndre. And uh, I realized I have the same relationship with Ariana that my mother had with me. I thought it was because she felt that I was a disappointment, but then I realized last night that it's because she saw she saw something in me and wanted to push me to be better. I just wish I would have realized that while she was still alive. <sighs> but I did talk with her, and before she passed, and um. Three days before she went in for her surgery, my father will tell you we got in a huge fight because uh, I overheard her talking to him and, uh, and, you know, she was upset with me because she had gotten her second COVID shot and she was sick in her room for day, three days and I didn't go up and check on her. And she's like, you, I wanted you to just come up and say hi. I said, Mom, you don't want to talk to me any other time. We always get in a fight any time we talk for more than two minutes. But she said, not when I was numb, but not when I'm sick. I want you there with me. I want you to check on me. And I couldn't be there with her when she died. Not for her surgery. But I wanted to be. Didn't matter how crazy our relationship was, she's still my mom. And I love her, and I will miss her. Thank you. Thank you so much. You did great. Would anyone else like to share a story, a thought? Funny? Would you like to say something? Sure. Sure, I. You, whatever's more comfortable for you. If you want to, that's fine. You can just turn around. I really don't have anything written down. Uh, probably all of you know what would go on in my mind. I mean, I had a million thoughts and feelings, and. Uh, I'm really not out of that mode yet. I'm getting better. But uh, I'll tell you what, we had over 50 years together. I love that woman. And yes, we had bad times and we had good times. And I just want to hold on to the memories. And it's going to take me a good long time, a good long time, to get over what's happened. And I always thought, that I'd be leaving before she did, but uh, it didn't work 
work that way. So uh, God bless her, and I will not forget her. Uh, and I thank you all for coming and uh, and being part of this. So uh, with that said. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Why don't you come on up here? Just look. We're doing a little filming, and we want to make sure we have you. I uh I don't have anything written down or anything, but uh as everyone knows that uh grandma was a great woman and uh she me and her always didn't have the best relationship. And uh we had good times we had bad times, but uh growing up, uh grandma would always save everything from the newspaper. Like I don't know, she felt as if I always didn't want her there, because sometimes it always felt like that, but, um, I always loved her, and, uh, even if I didn't tell her to come or mention it to her, she always bring it up after every game, ask me how good I did, and, <laughs> and I mean that, uh, she just, uh, she saved a lot of my newspapers, every one of my newspapers, everything that had my name in it, she saved it. All throughout my career, I don't know. We had good times, we had bad times, but I always loved her, and I always will. Anyone else? Want to try? Come on up. I just like to say that my sister made me the woman I am today. She taught me many things, bowling, softball, canning, how to cut up deer, and how to drink beer. <laughs> I will miss her dearly. I love you, sis. As my mom had discussed, we lived with my grandparents for about 18 years now. And during that time, you know, if anybody were to ask me to reflect, we always talk about Grandpa. Uh, Grandpa was the one who drove us around. Grandpa was the one who was at all the games. Grandpa was the one who did all these things. And you realize how much, like, you just didn't talk about Grandma. And you sit back, and after she had passed away, you kind of reflect on all the things that Grandma's done. Um, as my mom talked about mine and her relationship, me and my mom, especially when we were younger, we used to butt heads quite a lot. And when I'd be arguing with my mother, or we'd be fussing and fighting, Grandma would be the one to walk over to me. She'd sit down to me, she'd tell me how special I was, how important I was to her, and how much she loved me, even if... You know what I mean? It appeared that, you know, my mom was just being mad at me right now. And I think part of that was, like, as mom said, grandma understood the relationship that she had with my mother and understood that me and my mom had a very similar one. And though she might not have been able to sit here and express those kinds of things to my mom, I'm very grateful that she was able to express those kinds of things to me. And so... I won't ever forget the memories that I have with her, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, because at the end of the day, that's made her who she was. It's also helped to make you who you are. Anyone else? Sure, come on up. So I'm not like a grandchild or anything, but... Kara never treated me any different than any of them. Um, when they got yelled at, I got yelled at. <laughs> um, you know, so I've known Kara in about a month. So, well, not a month now, but I live with her basically, basically through quarantine. Um, 
she was definitely a piece of work. <laughs> um, one thing about her, she was going to tell you exactly how she felt in that moment. She wasn't going to hold back for nobody or nothing. Um, me walking through the house, first thing she says to me is, if you get a tattoo for your boyfriend, you're dumber than I thought you were. <laughs> She was amazing. She furnished my boyfriend's whole entire house um, and barely knew him. So it kind of just shows like what kind of person she was. She did a lot for me and Ariana. When me and I got our apartment, that was a lot for us. <laughs> that was huge for us. Um, when I referred to her, I referred to her as Grandma Karen. <laughs> she was amazing. <laughs> she was loving. She had a huge heart. And like she said, unfortunately and ironically, that was the reason she passed away. She just had a huge heart. And that's just the way I like to think about it. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, I hope that, that with all of this sharing and I... I sort of had the same relationship with my mom, and my daughter sort of had the same relationship with my mom that you have. And um, I, I think that someone told me once that our moms do the best they can do with what they have. And that has brought me some comfort, um, and I hope that, that you know she loved you. And if you don't think she knows how all of you are feeling, she knows now. She knows everything about you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And your lives are your lives because of your parents and your grandparents. And we owe it to them to live the best lives we can and to be the best people that we can. And I also believe that I'm a better parent because of my mom's good points, but also of the mistakes that she made. And I know and I pray that my children will be better parents because of the good things I show them, but also because of the mistakes that I've made. And I think every mother and every grandmother hopes that for her grandchildren, that you're better people because you knew them and you don't forget who they are. And you share your stories. You share your stories when there's grandchildren to share about your struggle. And you share your stories when you're a mom about your struggle. Because that will make your children better people. And that's really what we want in this world. I also believe in signs. I don't know if people here believe in signs. But I, I believe that we... <coughs> there's, a, there's a spiritual communication. And we just need to be aware of it. That, you know, they say when you see a cardinal, it's someone that has passed coming to show you that they're okay. And that's all right. But like I said with the bowling, if I ever pass a bowling alley from now on, I will think of her. And you might not think, well, she doesn't even know her, but it's here in my head, and your stories are here in my heart, so I will think of her. But you have to, you have to be aware to see the signs. And you'll really see them now because everything's so relevant right now. But just be aware in the future because they'll always be there. And she'll always be with you, always be with you. And she knows how much you loved her. Let's say a little prayer. We pray for, or for Karen, who spent their life showing kindness and generosity to others. She loved you, Lord, and put her faith and trust in you. Bring her home to you to live in the peace and the love that you promised each one of us. We also pray for members of our family and our friends who've gone before us and await the kingdom. Please grant them an everlasting home with your son. Karen's family and her friends seek comfort and conf cons consolation. Lord, heal their pain and dispel the darkness and dispel the doubt from grief. Lord God, hear the prayers of your people gathered here. Grant them the peace that only your love can give. Thank mm -hmm. you.
I'd like to share a little poem with you called The Magic of a Mother's Touch, or a Grandmother's Touch, or a Sister's Touch. There's magic in a mother's touch and sunshine in her smile. There's love in everything she does to make our lives worthwhile. We can find both hope and courage just by looking in her eyes. Her laughter is a source of joy. Her words are warm and wise. There is a kindness and compassion to be found in her embrace. And we see the light of heaven shining from a mother's face. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's close with prayer. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Karen in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him again on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Karen in this life, for they are signs of your goodness to us. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. Amen. And trusting in God, we have prayed for Karen. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see her again and enjoy her love and her friendship. Although we now dis disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console each other and let us live holy lives in the faith of Jesus Christ. And may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds the knowledge of the love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the Lord bless each one of us and grant us safe travel home. Amen. Thank everybody that for all of the overwhelming support you've given our family. 
uh, this past week. It, it is truly a, a testament to how many lives Karen has touched. And uh, we really appreciate all of your support. So thank you very much. Thank you. Folks, that does conclude the service at this time for Karen. We thank Chris Wenzel for her assistance today and also everyone that spoke as well. Like I said earlier, everyone is invited to the Cohocton Legion at this time for a reception. Thank you. So where do I get go if I get sick? You gotta fall and break some bones. You got to find that. Yeah, you got to have done that.
Is it a cup holder? No, this is a book holder. <laughs> huh? Okay, okay. It's a light. <coughs> Yeah, let's not touch stuff up here. I don't know. It's a Bluetooth uh, thing. He didn't even know about it. He did a good job. Oh, well, I know, but it's usually a little festival. Oh, yeah, right? Oh, I was behind your house a couple days. It was. I thought about it for sure. I wasn't in the right mind anymore. Oh, yeah. Right now. Right now. And given Grandma's cousins some flowers so they can remember her. The one he gave? Okay. They're beautiful. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I love the dragonfly. Oh, it's a butterfly. I thought it was a dragonfly. The butterflies. I love it. Yeah, Mommy will take some home too, honey. You want to take that one home? Okay. We'll see. We'll see. We want to give one to Shirley. But whatever ones we have left over, we'll take home. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, I want to take two home. You're going to take two home? 